Hey everyone, today we're looking at the paper Language Agnostic Bird Sentence Embedding by a bunch of authors from Google AI. The paper is about learning multilingual embeddings. Um, one popular approach that has been proposed previously to do this is to just train a bird model um, on large amounts of raw monolingual data um, in large number of languages and then you can obtain pretty decent embeddings in this paper they are trying to extend this approach to um, use not only the monolingual data but also to use some parallel data data sets that are available for many languages to further fine-tune the multilingual embedding uh, the uh, multilingual embeddings um, and make them even better and the authors propose a approach which they called language agnostic birth sentence embedding L A B S E and they tested on a number of um, multilingual embedding tasks in particular focusing on retrieval tasks such as mining for parallel sentences in raw corpora where they show improved performance over a number of baselines so let's look at it in a little bit more detail so at the um, core of the, um, the basically the architecture that they propose is in this figure one here and first of all you have a pre-trained BERT model trained on a lot of languages um, using the mass language modeling objective they use a BERT based model in this paper and so they pre-trained it as standard I think it's the same as the uh, multilingual BERT uh, methods um, reported in the original BERT paper and then they use this BERT model to initialize a transformer encoder network and they further fine-tune this transformer encoder network on parallel data of um, parallel sentences in different languages for example English and German sentences so given that you have let's say uh, two of those sentences in English and in German they pass those to the same transformer encoder network which produces some sentence embeddings and then they have some loss function um, which basically allows allows them to fine-tune this transformer encoder further on this parallel sentences so this is how it works basically um, and the authors train these this model on about 110 languages I believe um, and it's a lot of data and um, the all the languages are depicted in this figure here so you have obviously English is the biggest language um, in blue you have the um, monolingual sentences and then in red you have the number of bilingual sentence pairs from English to whatever language you're training on and um, so you have a lot of monolingual data for a lot of languages and then you have some bilingual data um, uh, as you can see in the right here and then also interesting well for many languages you don't have much data at all in comparison to English so they train on all of these data first on the monolingual data and then fine-tuning on the bilingual um, sentence pairs to obtain their final model their final model is um, kind of standard following the standard bird based architecture um, they have some special sampling methods which you can read more about in the paper and um, also their, their final model is using a BPE vocabulary of size about 500,000 tokens so pretty massive vocabulary and a massive number of embeddings are learned which is probably necessary to, to be able to cover the huge diversity um, in all of these languages in terms of um, yeah, vocabulary and writing systems and whatnot. 
So, moving on to some experiments. The authors test their embeddings on a number of multilingual alignment benchmarks, first of all, such as the BUCC task, which is basically you're given uh, a bunch of raw data sets, um, um, let's say um, a row French and English sentences, and you're trying to identify, um, find the most likely English sentence that, the, the, that has the same meaning to each French sentence, and the same for other language pairs. It seems that the LABSE approach proposed in this paper is kind of outperforming some previously proposed uh, methods for learning multilingual embeddings in some recent works. Um, on this task, as well as um, on, on the UN dataset, where they test on the task of parallel sentence retrieval, basically um, trying again to reconstruct some parallel data sets from um, basically, if you imagine you have your part of datasets and then you shuffle, shuffle them and then you don't know which sentences belong to which ones and you're trying to reconstruct those and the LABSE again seems to perform some uh, previous methods for pretty much for all datasets Another task that is interesting is the Tatoiba dataset which is again an alignment task where you're given 1,000 um, English sentences as well as 1,000 aligned sentences in about 112 languages. And then you're tasked again to extract the um, parallel sentences from this, da from this data. Parallel, data uh, parallel sentences in the correct uh, in the uh, for each language. So for each um, 1,000 English sentence, you have to find the correct translation in each of the 112 languages. And again, it seems that the LABSE model um, uh, outperforms kind of the, the previous state-of-the-art approach by about 18 or so percentage points here, which is cool, um, and the authors do um, also various analysis of this new multilingual model. Um, basically, they show that it seems that this new model works particularly well for the low resource languages, or even it can work in cases even when the languages have almost no um, or no resources available at all. Still, you can get some performance using this approach, which is cool. Um, and so this is due, due, uh, due to the fact uh, that you're combining this training on monolingual data as well as on parallel data. At least that's my interpretation. So this combination seems to be beneficial. But um, also, uh, indeed, in this, in this model, the authors do use a huge vocabulary. So they're using 500,000 tokens in the vocabulary, which is very large. And this also might be uh, contributing to this um, success. And um, yeah, and th this is kind of some, th there's some additional interesting analysis available in the paper. I would encourage you to check it out. And all of these models are available to download um, on GitHub or something like this. So that's cool. And then a final interesting experiment that the authors do is um, basically training some translation systems on the on some um, pseudo parallel corpora extracted from common crawl dataset, which is just crawl web pages. Basically, they crawl some to, to find some parallel English and Chinese sentences and English and German sentences. They extract 560 million and 330 million or, or no wait, or like quite a lot of million. I'm not sure actually what's the difference between those, but let's say you extract 200 and 100 for, for the two language pairs. And actually what they discuss is that using this pseudo parallel data set, you can get 
blue score, which is um, only a couple of blue points worse from the parallel um, from the result of the WMT um, datasets from 2017, I believe. So what they show is that you can actually, with this um, multilingual embedding, you, you can get some pretty nice performance in this um, task of mining parallel corpora um, for machine translation. So I think those are the main points that I wanted to cover for this paper. And overall, it's a pretty cool approach um, to building massively multilingual embeddings for a huge number of languages. So you have essentially in this paper a single model for 109 languages, and it can even work pretty well, it seems, for um, zero-shot embedding for languages that are not covered at all. Um, so that's nice. And the embedding seem to be pretty working pretty well for um, alignment tasks, similarity tasks. And um, yeah, so that is all. Thanks for watching and talk to you next time.